ஹலோ எவ்ரி ஒன் வெல்கம் டு தி டுவெண்ட்டி செவன்த் வீடியோ ஆன் ஸ்னோ ப்ரோ கோர் சர்டிஃபிகேஷன் சீரீஸ் இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு டிஸ்கஸ் அபவுட் டேட்டா ஷேரிங் வித் இன் ஸ்னோ ஃப்ளேக் தெர் ஆர் வெரைட்டிஸ் ஆஃப் ஆப்ஷன்ஸ் டு ஷேர் யுவர் டேட்டா வித் மல்டிபிள் பீப்புள் ஈவன் தோ தே ஆர் பார்ட் ஆஃப் ஸ்னோ ஃப்ளேக் ஆர் நாட் பார்ட் ஆஃப் ஸ்னோ ஃப்ளேக் ஆல் தி ஆப்ஷன்ஸ் ஆர் அவைலபிள் டு எஸ் தட் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு டிஸ்கஸ் அஸ் தி பார்ட் ஆஃப் திஸ் ஸ்பெசிஃபிக் வீடியோ first we will see what is data sharing and what are all the options which are available within the snowflake to share your data snowflake provides many ways to share the data from your snowflake account with the users in the other snowflake account including collaborating with the other parties in the secure environment as simple as it is to understand this we need to understand some of the common terms which is used across one is the data provider and other one is the data consumer by by definition you might be aware of that data provider is the one who provides the data can manage who can access your data and avoid challenges in keeping the data synchronized across different people and group similarly the data consumer is the one who can consume the data the important aspect of the data consumer is to reduce the data transformations to perform because the data stays in the snowflake making it easy to join the data set side with you with your own data as simple as it is see the providers these are all the some of the things which are very important for provider and for the consumer the reducing data transformations is the major concern so now what are all the options which are available within the snowflake to share the data one option is via listings listings is part of the snowflake marketplace this is the place where you can publish your specific data product data product meaning what set of table within snowflake which can do an specific reasoning or a specific problem as simple as it is i am trying to solve an weather related problem then you can create a data product for that specific problem that will be in the form of one or two tables that may be in the form of schema that may be in the form of the database that you can share via the listings in the snowflake marketplace second one is the direct share which is very widely used this is is used to share the data with one or more other snowflake accounts within the same snowflake region this is slightly different from the marketplace which is very widely used meaning any anyone can access the snowflake marketplace but this is very very unique and it is only specific to the accounts within the same snowflake region you don't need to copy or move the data shared within the direct share so for the direct share we will be creating something called as a share by creating the share we will be allowing the data consumers to consume the data and third option is the data exchange if create listings that you offer privately to specific accounts isn't an option then you can very well use the data exchange to share the data with selected group of accounts that you invite this and the snowflake marketplace are more or less similar but this provides something different if you want to group the accounts into one group and then if you want to share the data to that specific group then the data exchange can be the wisest option now here is the differentiation between listings and the direct share which is very important to know from the understanding and also for the exam point of view here you can see the listing it can be shared with one or more accounts in any region direct share one or more accounts in your region that is the difference between these two things so if you see auto fulfill across clouds is possible optionally charge for data that is the paid listings is possible with the listings optionally you can offer the data publicly you can get the customer usage metrics as well but those options are not at all available for your direct share so listings is slightly higher end which you can utilize the snowflake marketplace to do your data sharing now we are going to discuss about uh, the direct data sharing 
which we discussed in the earlier part that we call it as secure data sharing snowflake internally they are calling that uh, uh, sharing the data via shares is called as the secure data sharing so the secure data sharing lets you share the selected objects in your database in your account with the other snowflake accounts so this is all internal to snowflake you cannot share the data externally or publicly so if you want to share only within the snowflake accounts the two within the same region snowflake enables the sharing of databases through shares which are created by the data providers and imported by the data consumers as simple as it is all database objects shared between the accounts are read only that is you might be completely aware what read only is all about you cannot modify or delete or include or do anything on top of the data everything is only read only no actual data is copied or transferred between the accounts important thing to note that's the reason why the shares comes into play kind of a cloning mechanism where the data resides only in the provider account and in the consumer account you will be granted the access to access that specific data all sharing uses snowflake services layer and metadata store only again it implies that it is the metadata only operation no storage cost only compute resources that is the virtual warehouses used to query the shared data that will be consumed from your consumer account as a data consumer i need to provide my virtual warehouse to access the data which is provided to me by my data provider the provider creates the share of the database in their account and grants access to the specific objects in the database the provider can also share the data from multiple databases as long as these databases belongs to the same account as simple as it is on the customer side a read only database is created from the share so if it is a provider if we are going to see this in this diagram to a greater detail uh, so if you see here i am the provider i am having the database here is the consumer what it happens to be from the provider in the consumer side the share will be created that will be in the form of the read only so all probabilities are possible the provider and consumer can be the same account that possibility is also possible one provider can create the shares to multiple consumers that is also possible please see this diagram and pay some attention towards that this will give you more clearer understanding access to the shared database is configurable using the same standard role based access control in snowflake that provides all objects in the system as simple as it is using the rbac mechanism we can grant the access any full snowflake account can both provide and consume the shared data that is very evident from this diagram here if you see this is the provider here this is the consumer this is the provider here this is the consumer so the same account can be provider and consumer snowflake also supports third party accounts a special type of account that consumes the shared data from the single provider account that is also possible now we will see what the share is all about so so far which we discussed about the share is the mechanism by which we will be sharing the data between provider and consumer shares are the named snowflake objects that encapsulate all the information required to share the database data providers add the snowflake objects that is the databases schemas or tables or secure views to the share either or both of the following options we are going to discuss about these two things in the greater detail one thing is by granting privileges on objects to the share via an database role or directly granting the object to the direct share itself new objects added to the share become independently available to all customers providing real time access to the shared data updates to the existing objects in the share become immediately available this is pretty evident as it is the metadata only operation access to the share or any objects in the share can be revoked at any time you can create as many shares as you want and add as many accounts to the share as you want so there is no specific limitation it is unlimited unlimited number of shares you can create and unlimited number of accounts you can add as the consumer account you can consume as many shares as you want from the data providers but you can create only one data database per share again another caveat from the consumer end you can create any number of shares but you can create only one database 
Parshar. Here you can see this diagram. This is a slightly updated diagram. Here you can see in the provider account. In this schema, a only one specific object is getting shared with the share one and share two. Sorry, share one of the consumer account and my DB one, which is the share DB one here, and this is the my DB one here for the different consumer accounts. Similarly, if you see here, you can specify the complete schema. You can specify only one object within the schema. All these options are possible. So micro level. sharing is possible across database level schema level and also at the table level that is the evident thing which you can understand from this diagram now we are going to see how we are going to grant the uh, uh, privileges on the objects to the database role first thing we will be granting the access to the database role which is the d1 r1 if you see usage on schema select on this specific view d1 s1 v1 for the better naming conventions database one schema one and view one so we will be granting usage access on schema and select on access on the specific view which we are going to share to this specific database role now we will be creating the share using the create share command create share share one and then we will be granting usage on the database one database d1 to the share share one and then we will be granting that specific role if you see d1 r1 is having all the access that specific role to the share that is the reason why we mentioned very clearly here via the database this role which is shared with the share right and then finally you can do the alter share and add the consumer account here here we are adding the arg1 consumer1 and arg1 consumer2 these two are the consumer accounts which are going to access this view v1 via this share1 as simple as it is now let us see the second option within the share granting the privileges on the objects directly to the share using the role of account admin we will be creating the share which is the sales_s underscore yes, and we will be granting the access directly to that sales_s underscore yes share here so grant usage on database grant usage on schema and then grant usage on this table aggregate_s underscore one to that sales and now we are granting the share access it's like show grants to see how what are all the access which are granted to that share no specific meaning here no specific operation which is performed here then we will be adding the consumer accounts here here xy 1 2 3 4 5 yz 2 3 4 5 6 are the consumer accounts which are going to access this aggregate one table via this share of sales as right so this is how we can do the direct granting via the share without granting the access to the database role and then to share here we are doing it directly to the share now comes the another interesting feature which is called as the reader account so far we discussed about provider account consumer account consumer account will be built based on the data which it is going to access via the virtual warehouse which is used by the consumer Consumer account only. Here the other option. Say what if I want to share the data with the customer who does not really have a Snowflake account or not ready to become a licensed Snowflake customer? Then that charge is bared by the provider account only. That type of account we call it as the reader account. Why AKA read only accounts provides a quick and easy, cost-effective way to share the data without requiring the consumer to become the snowflake customer each reader account belongs to the provider account that created it as simple as it is as a provider user shares to share the databases with reader accounts however the reader account can only consume data from the provider account that it created it users in the reader account can query the data that has been shared with the reader account but cannot perform any of the dml task such as the data loading insert or update or data manipulation this is evident in previous case as well when the consumer accounts are created everything is read only here please see this diagram this is very important here there is a provider account within that provider account you can see the reader accounts got created so the bigger box there within that the reader account is there so non snowflake consumer to consume the data from the snowflake can be done using the reader account within the snowflake
now we are going to discuss about snowflake marketplace we already saw this to some extent a snowflake marketplace is the place where we will be creating the listings right so snowflake marketplace is the place where you can explore access and provide the listings to the consumers use the snowflake marketplace to discover and access the third party data and services as well as market your own data products across the snowflake data cloud again the common explore nation here so what are all the options which are available to you if you use the snowflake marketplace as a data provider you can publish your listings here for free to use data sets that generate interest and the new opportunities within the snowflake community you can publish the listings with the sample of data sets you can share live data sets securely in the real time without creating copies of data you can eliminate the cost of building many and maintaining the apis and data pipelines to deliver the data to customers you can and very well create the paid listings as well to charge your data products say if you are creating a data product and you want to charge the consumers for using the data product you can create the paid listings as well as a consumer what you can do you can discover the third party data sources you can combine the new data sets with your existing data in snowflake to derive the new business insights you can eliminate the cost of building and maintaining various apis and data pipelines you can use the business intelligence bi tools of your own guys please see this picture this is the snowflake marketplace where you are seeing all the listings there as a data provider you can create the data products you can create the listings in the snowflake data marketplace and then as a data consumer you can consume these specific things now we are going to see how these things looks like here is the snowflake marketplace website from snowflake here you can see what are all the top categories here you can see providers here browse for the data products if you click on that this will give you all the data products covid 19 epido um, epidemiological data us open sense data global weather and climate data all these things are free you can see free is mentioned here if it is a paid one there is a mention of paid here and if you see providers these are all the different providers acu weather is there similar web is there lot of providers are there so this is the similar one and if you see the data marketplace how it works using the simple video from snowflake here they are showing the same one here all the listings are there you can go and do this business if you click on on that similar one and here you can see the precise the information about that specific listing there right so by doing so you can very well utilize the listings within the snowflake marketplace to use all the specific features now we are going to discuss about the another important factor which is the data exchange within the snowflake what is the data exchange the data exchange provides the data hub for securely collaborating around the data with the selected group of members as a provider you can publish the data which can then be discovered by the snowflake customers participating in your exchange with the data exchange you can easily provide data to the specific group of consistent business partners taking part in the data exchange such as the internal departments in your company or vendors or suppliers and partners external to your company want to share the data with varieties of customers inside and outside your organization you can also use the listings offered by the specific customers on the snowflake marketplace it is a complimentary feature right so if you want to publicly share you can utilize the snowflake marketplace is the term which they are coining here you can manage the membership to access the data and the audit data usage as well apply the security controls to the data shared in the data exchange here you can see this diagram this is again a good diagram this is your organization this is the company b's organization what you can do you can create the data exchange here in your account you can create a share and then you can publish that share to your listing or data set and other thing for using the company as readers or writer account you can access that from that account you can also again create a listing or publishing there so by doing all these options you will be having the option to group everything under the common data exchange with this we come to end of this video as usual i hope this video has been informative for you please do write lot of comments that will be very very useful for me to enhance the course contents thank you very much for watching this video